Um, 
Honorable members, Madam Speaker. Prayer, Almighty God, who in the wisdom of the Shogunis have appointed us of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of such and the just government of humanity. We beseech you to look upon with your band favor these your servants, whom we've been pleased to call the performance such important trust in this land. Let your blessings take you descend upon here them assembled and granted the mayor as near presence. Treat and cause all matter that shall come at the deliberation. Is so just and so in manner to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to your charge.
Item two, communication from the chair. Honorable members, I want to welcome you to this afternoon sitting and I welcome you with a heavy heart that again today we gather here to have a special sitting in honor of a distinguished daughter of this great country the Supreme Court judge, the Lady Justice Stella Arach Amok. Honorable members, I communicated yesterday that uh, Justice Stella Arach Amoko breathed her last on Saturday 17th, June 2023. And she breathed her last in Nakasero Hospital. There are those who say that everybody goes to die out. She breathed her last from here. Section 23 and paragraph 11 of Schedule 3 of Administration of Judiciary Act 2022 requires Parliament to pay tribute to a fallen judge of a Supreme Court. Hence, this is why we are sitting today based on the law. We are not choosing who should be brought here, but we are acting on the law, and that's why we are here having this special sitting. Honorable members, the demise of Justice Araj Amoko. As Ugandans, we've lost a distinguished and unexplained 
an exemplary judge, very humane, and a judge who could easily be approached by anybody at any one time. At times you not believe that maybe she's a judge because most judges keep off to themselves. But Stella was always there for everybody. She was so welcoming. She would actually give you an advice where she thinks you don't have a case, she would advise you, don't waste your time. At a time when judiciary is undergoing a tremendous improvement, it is so disheartening that we can lose such a person. And our condolence as parliament go to judiciary. In within one year, we have lost two judges in Supreme Court. Kindly accept our condolence. And as parliament, we'll always stand by you. Honorable members, Justice Stella Rach Amoko was an icon of a dedicated and a professional selfless public servant and will dearly miss Stella. Some of us who knew her closely wouldn't even call her a judge, you would call her Stella, Stella. We had that rapport that would call each other the way we would want to call as girl children. This nation has lost and we keep praying that they may the good Lord be there with the family, with the, with the judiciary, with the whole nation, because she was such a pillar that cannot easily be replaced. I know somebody will always be there to, to take on the seat, but she cannot be the Stella that is going to lay just in front of us here. And without preempting today's debate that the Prime Minister is about to bring, we want to condone with the family as parliament, condone with the judiciary, the legal fraternity, the people of Nebi, Ajuman, Uganda at large. And may the soul of Justice Stella Raj rest in perfect peace. Honorable members, much as we have this special sitting, we have some few concerns. the concerns that are outside there are issues of robberies around money mobile kiosks. We want to ask the prime minister to ask the relevant authorities to make a follow up and find out what is happening. How can this be controlled? There is a lot of outcry there. We are going to have a body here, but we have an issue with the blood bank. As of today, we don't have blood in the blood bank. Can we have a statement on the floor tomorrow on the issue of the blood bank for lack of blood? Because tomorrow somebody will die and say that because there was no blood. We don't want another body here because of lack of blood. The interns, much as they promise they are going to work, the interns need to be paid. Prime Minister, you made a commitment during the budget day, kindly make a follow up and ensure that the 1,900 interns are deployed and are paid. We'll be very grateful to receive a report from you on the payment of interns and the deployment of those interns. And as we sit here now, after the 1,900 are paid, there is an accumulation of 4,000 interns yet to be deployed. 
and to be paid. And this would help us as legislature to plan better on how much money should always be given to health so that they can be able to save lives. We are tired of having dead bodies here in the house. And how we ask the good Lord that as legislature, we have had enough. May the good Lord really help us and save the people and not bring more bodies in the house. We cannot continue having special sittings and paying tribute to our colleagues. It's so disheartening. And I want us to dedicate this house to prayer, that we pray that maybe let this be the last for now. I know the God we serve is a living God. I know this will come to the end. Let our people live and serve the nation. Selah will dearly miss you. And we pray for your family. Pray for the children. Pray for your husband and, and everybody. Honorable members under Rule 7, I have admitted the Deputy Chief Justice, who is here sitting in for the Chief Justice, to sit in the chambers and witness the proceedings when we are paying tribute to our sister, our daughter, our friend. And since the deceased was a distinguished member of the bench, kindly join me in receiving him in the chamber. This CJ, you're most welcome. Uh, this is uh, Parliament of Uganda, people-centered parliament. And we thank you so much that we complement each other. We don't fight each other, we work together within the arms of government. Thank you. Transfer of the casket from the central lobby to the chamber. I request honorable members to please rise. Please remain standing as we receive the anthems.
you may resume your seats. Item four, laying of wreaths. And we shall begin with the right honorable speaker. The Right Honorable Prime Minister, Leader of Government Business. the leader of the opposition in parliament. the government chief whip. The Honorable Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. the Parliamentary Commission. Those are commissioners emeritus. The chief opposition whip. The Forum for Democratic Change Whip. The 
the Democratic Party whip. The Uganda People's Congress whip. Justice Forum Whip. Independence. The National Resistance Movement Parliamentary Caucus. West Nile Parliamentary Group. Excuse me, can I have my book here? Thank you. Karamoja Parliamentary Group. Bunyoro Parliamentary Group.
Honorable Okia Joan Aniku on behalf of Old Girls of St. Mary's Namagunga, class of 93 to 98. the National Unity Platform. the East African Legislative Assembly members of Parliament, Uganda chapter. Item five, motion for a resolution of parliament to pay tribute to the late Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko, Supreme Court Judge, pursuant section to schedule three of the administration of the Judiciary Act 2020. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister, please move the motion. Uh, honorable members, maybe before we move the motion, I want to acknowledge the presence of the family in the technical bench. This afternoon, we have the immediate family. We have Ambassador James Amoko, the husband. Please stand up and I worship Patricia Amoko, the daughter. Uh, Miss Annette Yosa, the daughter. Emmanuel Komakech, the son. Ivy Amoko, the daughter. Christine Anyok, the sister. Geoffrey Picho, the brother. Isaiah, a brother-in-law. In the public gallery, we have the family that is here to witness the proceedings. Kindly just stand up and wave. We also have Honorable Justice Christopher Gash. Honorable Gash. Sorry for shortening your name. I can't mention the, the rest. We have Honorable Justice Sekana Musa. You're most welcome. We have Honorable Lady Justice Susan Abinio. Susan, you're welcome. Susan was even here when they brought justice away. Thanks for always being there for your friends. Honorable Lady Justice Esther Nambayo, you're most welcome. Honorable Justice Lawrence Trianze, you're most welcome. Honorable Justice Sarah, our worship Sarah Langa, the Chief Registrar, you're most welcome. And then we have Honorable Lady Justice Olayo, welcome. We have Honorable Fred Jocham Omaj, the former minister, most welcome. We have Honorable Tete Chelengat, former MP, 
Welcome. Honorable Chayo Christian, former MP. You're welcome. Honorable Lydia Wanyoto, former MP. You're most welcome. Honorable, I've seen my OG Stella. You're welcome. You're most welcome, all of you. I will continue announcing as we continue. We have a condolence message from NRM party signed by Honorable Lydia Wanyoto. And then we have a condolence message. I am only reading one message from all these members of parliament. The family of the late just tell her Araj Amocho, Amoko, former Supreme Court judge. Condolence message to the family of the late Justice Stella Araj Amoko. We have learned with deep sorrow the demise of the late Lady Justice Stella Araj Amoko, the judge of Supreme Court, who passed away on Saturday, 17th, June 2023. Lady Justice Stella Araj Amoko was a jurist with an with a professional record who has served the courts and served this country with the unmatched degree of commitment, dedication, and humility. Uganda has lost a professional judge with selfless service, an exemplary citizen of unimpeccable value who was always professional in whatever she did. She actually saved a number of our members in this house when there was a case before her. May her soul rest in internal peace and close this 20 million shillings from Parliament of Uganda and signed by Anita Among, Prime Minister. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I move under Rule 56 of our Rules of Procedure to move a motion for resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to the late Honorable Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko, Justice of the Supreme Court and a former judge of uh, the East African Court of Justice for her de dedicated service to the Republic of Uganda. That Honorable Speaker and colleagues, whereas Parliament of Uganda received with deep sorrow news of the untimely death of Honorable Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko, Justice of the Supreme Court of Uganda, which occurred on 17th June 2023, aware that the Honorable Lady Justice Tera Arach Amoko has had a distinguished and faultless career serving in the public service of Uganda the judiciary and the East African community where she served with yeah. boundless dedication, utmost humility and commitment. Recognizing that the Honorable Lady Justice Tera Arach Amoko was an extraordinary jurist and an icon of justice who was instrumental in mm -hmm. mainstreaming alternative dispute resolution mechanisms in the judiciary and has been a mentor to judicial officers and advocates whose legal mind and dedication have left an indelible mark on the judiciary. 
appreciating that uh, the Honorable Lady Justice Tera Arach Amoko was distinctively dedicated, poised, and iconic leader who care, carefully served Uganda with devotion and her steadfast commitment to the judicial oath greatly contributed to the strengthening of judicial independence and the judiciary's adherence to the norms, values, aspirations of the people of Uganda, cognizant that uh, section 23 and schedule three of the administration of the Judiciary Act 2022 requires parliament to pay tribute to a justice of Supreme Court who dies while holding office. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Parliament of Uganda, one, collectively conveys its deepest condolences to the bereaved family, the judiciary, the legal fraternity, friends, and the people of Uganda for the loss of a distinguished and gallant citizen of this country. Appreciates, Parliament appreciates the distinguished service rendered and contribution made by the Honorable Lady Justice Tera Arach Amoko to the people of Uganda. The Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I beg to move. Thank you so much, Right Honorable. Is the motion seconded? Seconded by Honorable Guang, Honorable Chung Ching, Tuarizim, NIJ, Nandutu, Government Chief Whip, Minister of Constitutional Affairs. Minister of Constitutional Affairs, Honorable Mao, uh, Government Chief Whip, Honorable Chibombi, Honorable uh, uh, Winifred. Honorable Katuntu, Honorable uh, Propua Tinkasimire by the whole house. <coughs> Would you love to speak to your motion? At Honorable Speaker, here is my justification. At Honorable Speaker and colleagues, on Saturday, 17th June this year, we received the sad news of the death of the late Justice Stella Arach Amoko, Justice of the Supreme Court of Uganda and the former judge of the East African Court of Justice. Let Honorable Speaker, Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko was born on 5th October. Amoko. Amoko was born on 5th October, 1954. She completed Ambala Primary School in Lira, 1968. From 1969 to 1972, she attended Sacred Heart uh, senior secondary school guru for her O-level uh, certificate. From 1973 to 1975, Justice Araj Amoko attended Mount St. Mary's College, Namagunga, Lugazi for advanced level certificate of education. From 1975 to 1978, she did Bachelor's of Laws from Makerere University, Kampala. 1979, she attained a postgraduate diploma in legal practice from Law Development Center. Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko, later attained a master's degree at the International Judges Academy from Haifa University in Israel. 
Let Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, Lady Justice Stella Arachi Amoko had a distinguished professional legal career which spanned over 40 years. 1979, a pupil state attorney. From 1990 to 1993, she served as a senior state attorney. From 1995 to 1997, a commissioner for civil litigation. September 1997, she was appointed a judge of the High Court. November 2006, she was appointed judge of the East African Court of Justice. From February 2008, she was appointed a deputy principal judge to the East African Court of Justice. In August 2010, she was appointed a justice of the Court of Appeal. July 2013, she was appointed justice of the Supreme Court. June 2014, was a chairperson of the Law Development Center Management Committee. August 2017, served as chairperson of Judicial Training Institute. March 2018, served as chairperson Senior Counsel Committee. October 2018, served as the chairperson of the Judiciary Monitoring Committee. January 2021, she was a member of the Judicial Service Commission. At Honorable Speaker, Lady Justice uh, Stella Arach Amoko was married to Ambassador James Amoko and he survived with children and grandchildren. She was a mother of the chess player, Kerea Amako, the first woman to become a woman by master in East Africa. Despite her busy, honorable speaker and colleagues, despite her busy schedule on the bench, Lady Justice Stella Arachi Amoko served the country and the region in other various positions as follows. One, she was president, National Association of the Women Judges. Two, she was a member of the executive of the Uganda Magistrates and Judges Association. Three, she was a member of the Judicial Training Committee. Five, she was a member of the Federation of the Women Lawyers FIDA. At Honorable Speaker, she served as a regional representative, Uganda Judicial Officers Association. She served as executive, she served on the executive council as executive council member and vice secretary of the East African Magistrates and Judges Association. She was a member of the Law Council. She was a board member of the Canadian Physicians for Aid and Relief. Honorable Speaker, she represented the Attorney General on the National Medical Stores and Uganda Pharmacy Boards. She was the chairperson of the Legal Aid Clinic Advisory Board Law Development Center. Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the late Justice Stella or Arach Amoko was a true legal professional who dedicated her career life to the judiciary. She was an extraordinary jurist and a champion of the justice whose career record was faultless. The justice Amako, Amoko made her mark while at the commercial division of the high court. It was during her tenure as head of the commercial court that alternative dispute resolution strategies such as mediation and arbitration were introduced. 
that Justice Arach Amoko was instrumental in the framing of the intellectual property, banking and insurance laws. She was also the brain behind the licensing of so many universities to teach law. The late justice was a mentor of many at the bar and the bench. I wish to extend my heart felt sympathies and condolences to the family, the chief justice, friends, and the entire judicial fraternity upon this great loss of a first rate judge. May the soul of late Justice Tera Arach Amoko rest in perfect peace. That honorable speaker. Thank you. Big... Thank you so much. And you should learn one thing from their alternative dispute resolution. Be it politically, we should be able to do it. And she will be remembered for that. Thank you so much. Uh, Seconda. Right honorable speaker and the colleagues, I throw my full weight behind the mover of this motion in its support. I condole with the family of the late Mary Tela Arach Amoko, the judiciary, and the entire country for the loss of a very astute judicial officer with an impeccable career dedicated to service, accountability, and most importantly, constitutionality and justice. The late Lady Justice rose from state attorney in the attorney uh, general's chambers to judge of the high court and then deputy principal judge of the first instance division of the East African Court of Justice. Just of appeal and finally just of Supreme Court. Achieving this with no damaging blemish per se is no mean feat. We can only draw lessons from the lifelong excellent commitment to justice and fairness. Justice Araj Amok has been called to a higher service at such a critical time when this country is in dire need of level-headed benevolent jurists of her character. Her love for the law is matched only by her formidable contribution towards its improvement under constitutionalism. Justice Arach is a matured service in shaping Uganda's jurisprudence cannot be overstated. She headed the commercial division of the high court and her service there was distinguished. During her tenure, there was introduction of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms like mediation and arbitration. These are mechanisms intended to reduce case backlog of uh, litigants, cheaper and faster means of amicable resolution of disputes, thereby ensuring justice. As the saying goes, justice delayed is justice denied. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, Yasara Chamok established herself as a notable authority in election petitions. Her judgments, for instance, have since laid a very strong foundation for electoral jurisprudence in this country. For instance, in the case of Francis Babu versus Electoral Commission and Elias Rugwago, election petition number 10 of 2006, Aracha Mok, judge of the High Court as then she was, 
held that the petitioner who had lost an election was stopped from challenging contents of a declaration of results form that was duly signed by that petitioner's agent at the polling station. This position is still resounding in the current election petitions. Madam Speaker, her lead judgment in Muyanja Mbabali versus Virekelao Masias in Subuga under the Electoral Commission Election Petition Appeal Number 36 of 2011 fervently observed that the burden of proving the authenticity of impugned academic documents, which are relied on for nomination and election, rests solely on the owner of the documents and not on the party that alleges forgery. These and more decisions have shaped the jurisprudence to date. We have lost a dedicated servant of the Temple of Justice, whose judicial service spanned for 25 years. She was part of the crop of judicial officers whose poise and character are beyond reproach generally. Arach has been an officer of great allegiance and immense dedication. She believed in constitutionalism and the democracy. This is illustrated uh, more especially in the Supreme Court's decisions that salvaged our honorable colleagues election in the 2015. Lady Justice Amoko was on the bench when the Supreme Court held that a member of parliament cannot lose their seat in the house upon expulsion from their political party. Yeah, in the infamous case of Rebo MPs, Wilfred, <laughs> Wilfred Nwagaba and others, first as NRM, Attorney General, and others, Constitutional Appeal Number 01 of 2015. Others were, of course, the Honorable Tinga Simide, the Honorable Siodo Research Kubo, and uh, the Honorable in Sereko Muhammad. This decision buttressed the constitutionality, rule of law, and a democratic governance by holding that political parties cannot subvert the will of the people. Ugandans should have a right to join the political parties of their choice, and the political parties ought to exercise the internal democracy and good governance as mandated by the law. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, joining and supporting political party is not a crime. Many of our supporters, as we eulogize in this house, are languishing in prison, and others are in illegal detention centers. Many are undergoing purposely prolonged prosecution. Some are answering trumped up charges, while others have neither been charged nor are there even their whereabouts known. Government has played ping pong over the issue of abduction is over opposition supporters. And on uh, another day, we shall announce to this house our next course of action towards this impunity. I, uh, Honorable members, when we are paying tribute, we do it with the respect, with the love to the person who has fallen. Let's not talk about what we are planning to do next. Let's do it and we see it being done. Let's talk about Stella as a professional, a level headed person. And I want to put this on record that all the judges that we have in this country, all the persons we have in legal fraternity are label headed all are label headed uh, much obliged right honorable speaker
I'm cognizant of personal virtues of the late, I'm resuming from where I stopped, the late Justice Arach Amoko, accountability, integrity, transparency, reign the high to her. In the famous decision, for instance, of the oh, Supreme Court. That is the Bududa man I know. In the famous decision of the Supreme Court, in Gladys Chibule, Kiseka versus the Attorney General, Constitutional Appeal number 02 of 2016. Raj Amoko stressed that the Judicial Service Commission ought to be allowed to carry out its own investigation is into allegations of judicial misconduct as far as possible. In this case, Supreme Court was deciding a constitutional appeal where a judicial officer had protested the jurisdiction and the constitutionality of a judicial service commission to entertain complaints related to exercise of judicial power. Justice Araj held that any decision made by the commission could then be referred to court. But, other, but after the commission has conducted its investigation and made its findings on the allegations, whereas decision might have uh, the effect of eroding judicial independence, the spirit of the judgment was that judicial officers ought to use the immunity judicial, judiciously and remain transparent at all times. An inspiration that is first wearing away in our current judicial system. Several times, judicial officers have been implicated in illegal mass evictions of people, soliciting and taking bribes, among other ills. I urge judicial officers to emulate the late Justice Arachi's stance on accountability, transparency, in order to dispense justice meaningfully. The legacy of Lady Justice Stella Arach Amok was not only the dispensation of justice or judicial activism and the shaping of jurisprudence, but also nurturing legal scho uh, scholars. Throughout her tenure on the bench, Justice Stella Arach Amok endeavored to do justice as a jurist striving not only to help those less fortunate than herself, but also to ensure quality training for those who sought to follow in her footsteps. She worked relentlessly to open the doors of legal practice to many young lawyers. When she served as chairperson of the management committee of the Law Development Center. During her tenure, Madam Speaker, she successfully championed the following reforms. Decentralization and offering all its courses at regional constituent colleges to over, overcome congestion of the Kampala main campus. The regional campuses in Barara and Arira were opened and are currently operational. Roman II, the Law Development Center was able to expand staff, thereby reducing student to professional advisor ratio, as well as enhancing staff welfare. Roman III, divorcing teaching from examining. This was primarily intended to overcome high failure rates that were partly caused by alleged bias of examiners. And the last the introduction of the max verification policy. This is where a student who has scored up to a given threshold, but below the 50% pass mark can apply to verify their marks. The policy was intended to address increasing numbers of Marx complaints, many of whom ended up in the courts of law. These and more achievements, Madam Speaker, are a testament of her exemplary leadership and dedication to transform the legal profession at different horizons. 
despite these positive developments, Law Development Center continues to grapple with the challenges of high failure rates and a few full-time academic staff, among others. I urge the Ministry of Justice and the Constitutional Affairs to decisively attend to the structural challenges at the Law Development Center by building on the efforts of the late Arach in order to holistically transform the training of the bar course students in this country. Finally, Madam Speaker, allow me to take the liberty as we celebrate Justice Arach, his life to appraise the house on and invite all of us to reflect upon the courts of law and their attendant mandate in the administration of justice, which has been inhibited by all standards as below, independence of the judiciary. Independence of the judiciary, Madam Speaker, is a pertinent pillar of democracy and the constitutionalism. We need to first track the independence of the judiciary and free it from the current intrusive tendencies from executive interference in the exercise of their judicial function. We all are alive to the cases when during broad daylight, courts have casually been stormed by the military with a view of overturning the findings of the court. Without shame, suspects have been rearrested on the same set of facts after being released by court on bail. Uh, is, we that, thank is, God. That, is that what uh, Justice Arach was doing? I am talking about let's pay tribute to Justice Arach. Issues right. of court, when we have time, bring issues of court and discuss issues of court. Thank you. Respectfully, respectfully, right honorable speaker, as I conclude, we thank God that our colleagues like the Honorable Sewanya Nalan and uh, Honorable Sekirinya Muhammad are finally out. Were they not released by court that you are castigating? And uh, state operatives, the rest is history, Madam Speaker. State operatives have severely inhibited the performance of judicial duties. Let me once again re echo one of the matters that were before the late justice. And that is the Honorable Robert Chagulani Center Movasas, His Excellency. I'm concluding with this. His Excellency, Yaweri Gakuta Mseveni, Tebukaburwa. Two others, election petition number one of 2021. In this petition, Madam Speaker, our party president, principal, the Robert Chagulani Center Mo, sought to challenge the outcome of the 2021 presidential elections. It should be recalled that at that time of filing this petition and adducing evidence, the regime subjected the Honorable Robert Chagulani to illegal house arrest, seized and locked up the new party offices. Could, could the petition not be filed because it was in house arrest? Uh, let me conclude, and uh, uh, I'm coming, Madam Speaker. The, it was seized and even the offices locked up where the evidence was kept, was being kept, and also key witnesses arrested. Therefore, among other reasons, it is apparently uh, clear, uh, became clear and impossible for uh, the petitioner to pursue the petition, thus withdrawing it. This is an indictment on the part of this arm of government, the judiciary to always rise to the occasion and the word of human rights violations in the course of the dispensation of justice, as it is a call on the regime to restrain itself from such conduct. As much as people look to the courts for redress of conflicts and the remedy, the that from the linen of internal conflict that currently bedevils the institution involving its own cadres has disfigured the expectation of the quality of justice. As you will recall recently in the media, it was awash with the confession is of an employee of the judiciary 
about his poor welfare and undesirable working conditions, whereas I am aware that the matter is, in, is active in court, I can only call upon the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, who is before me here, to ensure justice for all persons and appear before the judiciary, even Honorable though members, they complain let's about not this castigate judiciary. I have a petition on my desk where your drivers are complaining about you people, you the members of parliament. You're not paying your, your drivers, you're not paying your personal assistance, and now you're trying to think judiciary is a problem. All of you are a problem. And you will not expect a judge, you will not expect a judge to pick his or her money from her pocket and pay a driver. Those are civil servants. Stella was a very calm girl, calm lady. Speak about Stella. If you have your issues, if you have your issues with the government, come back another day. Let's a day when well, let's have a day when we shall talk about Uganda. Uh, finally, Madam Speaker, the late Justice Aracha Monk was a steadfast servant to the Temple of Justice who believed in fairness, accountability, transparency, and constitutionalism. It is my aggregate belief that an independent judiciary is what she envisioned and aspired to when she sought to practice law and later adjudicate justice in Uganda and the region. May we emulate and pass on her legacy for posterity. Thank you. May the soul of Honorable Lady Justice Mary Stella Arach Amok rest in eternal peace. Thank you. I beg to second, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much, uh, government uh, uh, lead of opposition. He has uh, ably seconded. And uh, when you look at uh, the judicial officers, are bound by common values. That is transparency, accountability, objectivity, and honesty. And that's what Honorable Raj had. And that's what the judicial officers out there, all the judicial officers out there stand for. I am not going to say there is corruption in judiciary because we've never got a report on it. I want to thank judiciary that is led by my brother next to me here for upholding the common values of judiciary. The decisions that were the decisions that were made by Stella, Stella, there was a panel of judges. It was not a single person's decisions. And I want, we don't need to thank them when they are all dead. We want to thank those judges who were together with the Stella making all these decisions that have been read. We want to thank you so much. And uh, as the an arm of government legislature, if there is anything say that will hurt judiciary, we want to say sincerely, we are sorry. It's not a position of parliament. It's a personal position. We are th there are three arms of government. There is executive, legislature, and judiciary. And we have agreed to work together, respect each other, and if we are to disagree, we do it respectfully. The decisions that will be made here are not for this house. If a person makes it for us, we are here to pay tribute to our sister. Dean of Independence. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I also rise to second the motion as moved. As independents, we pay tribute to an independent judicial officer. Right Honorable Speaker, the Global Corruption Index 
ranked Uganda as 142nd out of 180 countries uh, in corruption ra ra ratings. That was an improvement of two places of a decade. A joint survey by the Inspectorate, Inspector General of Government and the U UBOS, Uganda Bureau of Statistics, in 128 districts in determining the most corrupt government institutions in the country. And according to 53% respondents of the sampled in 128 districts, the courts of law ranked in the fourth place in corruption of the most corrupt government institutions. According to the Inspector General's report, talking about re uh, reports, the police and judiciary ranked among the most corrupt government institutions in the country. It can therefore be safe to state generally that the courts of law still have a long way to go in reading themselves of that image. The Vasoga have a saying that onte omnyalali anyalali lalugo. That when one cow passes loose stool in a kraal, it can be perceived that the cattle in the kraal passed loose stool. While the general perception is that corruption is highly prevalent in the judiciary, Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko has been and leaves a legacy of having been the exception to the general perception. It's called a tip. It's not corruption, it's called a tip. Lady Justice Stella Arach Amoko has been an amiable what, what judge. Put, what have you put in your pocket? You have put a tip. No. And you're saying that judiciary is corrupt. Then you're most corrupt. How can you how can you get a tip when you're on the on the floor? So first can you first take back your tip? Take it back. No, no, no. Lady no. Justice uh, Stella Aracha Moko has get, been an amiable judge. Get your tip and take it back. R right honorable please, speaker. Please, please sit. Right honorable speaker. Sit. When you're talking about corruption, you must lead by example. Most obliged, right honorable speaker. <laughs> Lady Justice Sela Rach Amoko has been an amiable judge who, have, uh, who affirmed before rebuking litigants even if there was need to rebuke. She affirmed before she rebuked. She has been the mother's face of the Supreme Bench, right honorable speaker. She has been the personification of active listening. She would listen with interest, without interruption. Right honorable speaker, this is a rare game uh, on, with, the judicial, with the judiciary and the bench. Very few judges will listen with interest and with respect if they don't agree with your opinion. The sum of it all being that Lady Justice Stella Rach Amoko has been a God-fearing judicial officer who will be dearly missed by all who knew that while she was an earthly judge, there was a judge higher than herself. As we commiserate with the nation and with the bereaved family, we pray that her legacy endures many, many, many generations after her.
May her soul rest in eternal peace for God and my country. Thank you. Thank you so much. May Stella so rest in eternal peace. And um, before I open the debate, we in the VIP gallery, we have Canon Chris in Simania. Canon Chris in Simania is a reverend for the Anglican in Parliament. We have uh, Honorable Bako. Honorable Bako, Bako. Okay, you're welcome. Well, for my IGG, we also have a big team from uh, the Navy community, headed by Musei Peter Uchanda. You're most welcome. Honorable members, we are going to have a debate on pay tribute to Stella and how I request that when we are talking about a person lying just in front of us here, let's talk about her. The good thing she has done in this world, the legacy she has left behind. Because today it is Stella there, tomorrow it will be one of us there. The issues that are policy in nature, will be discussed later. It is you people who are supposed to discuss those policy matters. Let's first pay tribute and uh, leave our sister to rest in eternal peace. Issues of judiciary are judiciary, they are not for Stella. Honorable Katuntu, we are now opening the debate. Katuntu, Tinka, First. Uh, thank you very much. Right. I am giving Katuntu to start because he's going to make give you a way to debate. Much obliged, right honorable speaker. Thank you very much. And honorable colleagues. Right honorable speaker, I have known. Honorable Just Stella Raj from 1991. I had just left law school and I joined the Ministry of Justice as a state attorney. At that time, there were a few senior lady lawyers who actually mentored some of us. At that time, we used to be called people state attorneys. Notably, the late Jane Anua the late Honorable Justice Margaret Chireju, the late, I don't know whether she's dead, Caroline Okello, Mrs. Masika, the sort of stories that those ladies tell is a story of success, is a story of perseverance, is a story of integrity, it is a story of patriotism. The ministry at that time, right on our speaker colleagues, was not even paying emoluments or salary worth to talk about. Yet those ladies and many other gentlemen stayed on persevere to, say, to serve this country. No wonder many of them eventually shifted to the judiciary and they rose like the late Honorable Just Stella Raj did. Colleagues, the lady lying in the box there is a lady of integrity. The lady lying there is a patriot. One of the things I'll always be happy to myself is to be part and parcel of this house when we are pa passing the administration of the judiciary bill. Those people needed that bill especially those who crossed from any other, from other departments of civil service and became judicial officers, or even those who rose from the, from the magistrate's court 
rise up to the high courts. When I joined the, the Minister of Justice, I'm sure the honorable, the chief justice in the chambers was a magistrate. I have seen these people sacrificing everything to rise up to where they are. And what is the story, right honorable speaker? You can actually rise by doing the correct thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do wrong things to rise. These, of course, institutions will have those challenges of corruption. Our, co our colleagues have talked about it. Which institution does not have those challenges? But there are people within those institutions who work day and night to make sure that this country is a better country. Just tell her that deserves that name called justice. When you read her judgments, you just see justice in them. There are judgments you can read and you see legal engineering. There are judgments you read and you see justice. Even if the decision is against you, when you're alone in your bed, you say, well, I think the court was right. That is one of the ladies seated right, sleeping right in that box. We know her. All lawyers who appeared before Lady Just Terra Raj will tell you the story. Very calm, meticulous, and amiable. Sometimes judges can be bullies. For those who have appeared in the courts, you know. And they are bullies not even to the litigants alone, but even to lawyers. She isn't one of them. You feel comfortable when you have a presiding judge who, even if she doesn't accept your argument, she will treat it with respect, including in the judgment itself. Right, Honorable Speaker, the story of Justera Raj is the story of a woman rising. It is a story of success. In America, they say it is possible. To the Sarah Raj, it is possible. And indeed, it was possible. I one time had an opportunity to interact with just Sarah Raj at a family level. We had just been elected to be members of the Pan-African Parliament and our first station was in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia. Ambassador Amako was the deputy chief of mission at that time, I think. And they invited us to his house. And I did not at that time actually that she was a wife to Ambassador Amako. So when I reached there, we reached there, a group of us, we are five members of parliament. Here was a lady who was not behaving now like the judge you are, you are thinking about. She was now a mother. She was now a housewife, serving us, entertaining us. I don't know whether Ambassador Marco remembers that incident somewhere in Addis Ababa. We left, and I remember Hono Matembe asking, Justin Arach does not behave like a judge. Because at that time, the heirs of the judges were not there. She was purely a mother, purely a housewife. That is still lying in there. Colleagues, I know there's been a little bit of controversy in the family. Let that controversy not overshadow the career of a great woman. The career of a very tall woman. Because it was an honor for this country to have Justin Raj as one of our judges. Just a Raj, rest in peace till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's start with the Honorable Chivombi before Honorable Tinka. But the question is how many of you are wives and mothers when you leave the chambers here? You like bullying your husbands. You should be wives, you should be mothers when you leave the chambers here. Right, right, Honorable Speaker, I thank you for this opportunity. 
Right Honorable Speaker, I rise to pay tribute to and a testimony because for all intent and purposes, there are chances I will not be a member of parliament if it was not for a judgment of Madame Stella Amok Alaj. And I'm going to speak about that case and pay testimony to her level of integrity. By the time some of us were trying to stand for election, this country was grappling, was grappling with three and a whole trinity. Massive vote rigging, fear and intimidation, and vote bribery. I stood on an election and fairly won, but I lost. So I had to petition court against the advice of my family because they never believed I had a chance in the judicial system. And I petitioned, I think mine and Dr. Rulume Baiga are the standard bearer of voter bribery. I petitioned court purely on voter bribery. I had 28 counts of voter bribery. The law required me to prove only one to overturn an election. I was before Justice Chibuka Musoke. He evaluated nine cases out of 28 and I won all. And he said, since you required one, there was no need to evaluate the rest. But onwards, there was an appeal to the to a court of appeal. On my bench was a deputy chief justice then, his lordship, Stephen Kavma. Justice Amok Arach and Remy Kasule. I was being represented by one of the most able lawyers, my comrade Asman, the likes of Meda Rubega Segona, the road mayor, Honorable uh, Elias Rukwago then. And when on the day of judgment, the lead judge in my case was the deputy chief justice by rank. There was it, an 81 page judgment from the lead judge. Honorable Katunto has talked about properly engineered. And an attempt was being made to overturn nine successful counts as judged by Chibuka Musoke, the justice. It was a tall order. This lady here descended from the judgment of the lead judge. She wrote a leading dissent judgment from the judgment of Justice Kavuma and only wrote 21 pages. And those, those 21 pages, she overturned the 81 pages. And Justice Remy Kasule concurred with her 100%. And therefore, the minority judgment now became the majority judgment. Cutters of her integrity had never known her, talked to her, or even there you are. So the task, this lady lying here, that's why I stand here to pay tribute and a testimony. She was beyond reproach. If we are set, talking about standards, she says, the gold standard in the judiciary. And let us make an appeal for all justices. There's nothing comforting to appear before a judge when you know you have appeared before a judge. There is nothing discomforting to appear before somebody in some gown, but you assure that person may not be a judge. When you appeared before this lady, you have appeared before a judge. So this is the lady we are paying tribute. 
Right Honorable Speaker, that's not the, the first time. When she was a high court, a judge of the high court, but I think in charge of civil uh, division, there were many cases then. I was a young boy here. There were many cases then in Kampala in own properties. How quickly she resolved those cases and without any hint of bribery. By the way, bribery is given, but gets to be known. If I'm going to give you a bribe, my family somehow will know. There are friends of mine whom I will raise money from, but you'll never hear anyone raising money to go after justice. Alachamo. Amok. In our parliamentary oh, prayer. She's, she's not a mom. Uh, a mom. Arach Amok, Stella. In our parliamentary prayer, right, Honorable Speaker, one of the daily prayers we members of parliament go after is that we, we pray to God so that all matters that come before us, we judge them in so justice a manner and faithful a manner to promote the honor and glory of God. Can we all, Ugandans, in whatever we endeavor to do, take a role model in the lady lying here to be true and affirm to that notion? May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Now, even if Honorable MP now talks, my someone has spoken. Honorable colleagues. No, have... that is my independent. It's not your noob. Yes. Uh, my Honorable colleagues who have already paid the tribute. Two to minutes. The late uh, justice. Uh, right, honorable, uh, right Honorable Speaker, we requested for more than two minutes with your indulgence. You know, all these people want to speak. M much obliged. But... Okay, you start speaking. You're even spending th your time. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, it but is a Let me first ask something hearts. before you speak. All of you are saying, talking very good about honor, uh, uh, Honorable Stella what she did for you, she kept you in parliament. She, who of you even ever went to visit her? She was in hospital for eight months. Just put it in yourself. That next time when somebody helps me, I should be able to look out for that person and go and say, last word, thank you. Okay, speak. Uh, no, I'm speaker. I am not expecting a response to that. You make your speech. The lifestyle justices live largely excludes them from the public. Uh, we keep praying for them that in that exclusion, the Lord, is, the Lord keeps them holy and steadfast. The lady before us I knew her in three capacities as a seriously trained lawyer, two, me as a litigant before her, three, she was a member of the Uganda Catholic lawyers. For us, in those three capacities, we miss her because she's not going to participate again. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chivumbi and uh, Honorable Professor Katuntu have greatly apologized about the integrity of the Lady Justice Stella. To just say that 
Her integrity was unmatched, is even an understatement. I don't know what word we can create to describe her level of integrity. Right, Honorable Speaker, and Honorable Members, we stood indicted from our own political party in 2013 to 2015, and our seats were on a threat or had been threatened by our expulsion in the NRM party. The Constitutional Court ruled against us, ruled against the speaker, but thank you. Ruled against uh, the speaker who had created the special seats where the body of a great woman is lying. Those special seats, I think we are created with a special guidance from the holy angels of God. And I am glad that the holy angels who always keep this place is where a distinguished justice is seat is lying and they are guarding her. They will guard you until you enter your grave and go to heaven. Right, Honorable Speaker, when you talk about this great lady, you become emotional. Well, I, when we were in the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Court had made five orders, 13 declarations. One of the orders that we vacate parliament and the electoral commission should organize immediately elections. The other order was that the order of the attorney general, the advice of the attorney general is binding on a speaker. It was going to be continue being a darker day when a, 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 the attorney general will come and advise a number of government and bind it. It was the ruling that this great justice participated in that removed those chains from a arm of government to stick to the advice of the Attorney General. I don't know how you would be conducting business, right, Honorable Speaker, if it was not to be this uh, uh, wonderful, distinguished Lady Justice. For us, who were before her as a litigant, we saw an administrator of justice. We did not see anywhere a merchant of justice. She detested merchants of justice from both the bar and the bench. You appear before her as a merchant of justice a lawyer, a merchant of justice, pushing, she will rebuke you. Right, Honorable Speaker? This country is missing a great lady. We are only thanking God that she stood for a greater value. We will greatly miss you, but let us carry that banner that you stood for integrity. Everywhere across the board, you have been challenging us here. For once, a member party, you also stand up for the cause of the people. But that's what it... Madam Speaker, we believe that uh, as we are in this world, all of us have to answer the inevitable call from our creator. I am happy for today that the great lady we are talking about, angels of God, 
are welcoming her. I want to state that when people of God are happy, God himself is very happy. So the angels of God are dancing, welcoming uh, this great lady. Ask yourself, when I answer one day, the inevitable call of my creator, what will happen on that particular day? Uh, may the soul, I and my colleagues, we shall honor her greatly. And uh, right honorable speaker, uh, we will move to also see where she's going to rest. Because now uh, uh, on Saturday, uh, she's now uh, included in the public life. Now we can visit her. We'll be able to visit the children. Uh, no longer excluded from the public life. So uh, we pray that honorable colleagues, other than us paying tribute to her, we go and see where this lady, this great lady, is going to live forever. Thank you. Thank you so much. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Honorable judges, don't exclude yourselves too much from the public. We need each other. We need to interact. And uh, as Tinker has talked, ask yourself, tomorrow when we are no more, who will also pay tribute and say, Tinker was a great man? What will they say about you? Apart from maybe your children and your wives, what will they say about you? So it is time for us to do a reflection. Let's reflect, correct ourselves, and say what will people say about me? How many people will, will pay tribute and say, so and so was the best person? Uh, can I have one rebel? Then uh, justice. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I stand here to support the motion to pay tribute to one of our greatest jurists Uganda has produced. I first came to interact with the late Justice Stella Alachamoko. The very year I was enrolled in 1997. And appearing before her as a young lawyer, you would see a courteous judge. You would see a motherly judge. And you would see a judge who wants to dispense justice to its substantiality. To my recollection, you would have to raise a preliminary objection before justice still because she would first want to interface between herself and the lawyer to see whether it's necessary to have a PO or go for substantive justice. And no wonder when she subsequently joined the commercial division, which was just beginning, alternative dispute mechanism began through those initiatives. She has made so many judgments that touch both the politics of this country, the commercial area, including criminal and all aspects. But one of the things I would want you members of parliament who are here to praise her for is the protection of your privileges as members of parliament. People could have looked at the decision, our, our affair between us, myself and my colleagues with NRM as personal, but the decision made by the Supreme Court on interpreting Article 83 of the was so important that it subsequently enabled this very parliament when the government foresaw a defeat and came up with a motion to amend the constitution to include expulsion as a ground for ceasing to be a member of parliament and all members of parliament said to hear with this kind of motion. Because at our time, all political parties were yearning to expel members DP had rebels whom it wanted to expel. UPC had, NRM had, FDC had. So that decision restored your privileges as members of parliament. You, when you are here, please speak for your people without fear or favor. Because 
Stella Arachi and her colleagues in the Supreme Court made that important decision. There are many good things to talk about her. But one last one is a call to our judicial officers. The trend, the current trend of the talk in the town, especially among the legal fraternity, that you have judges and justices over the people vis-a-vis -vis cadre judges ought to stop. If you are appointed a judge or a justice of any court, please be a judge or a justice for the people. The business of being cadre judges who are at times merchant judges ought to stop. And may I request them to emulate Justice Tera Lachi. And when we were passing passionately the administration of justice bill, that act to help the judiciary be self-sustaining, we had in mind to reward people like Justice Tera Alachi. Of course, all benefited, including those who should not have benefited. But at least the good ones benefited, and we hope we, this parliament should continue to support the judiciary so that we nurture many more Justice Taylor Araches. May her so rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. As parliament will continue supporting judiciary so that we don't have the cadres who want to make sure that they are comfortable in whatever they do. And we've, we've not yet known of any cadre yet. A Minister of Justice. Uh, Minister, I thought you would speak last. Since that is your ministry. So can we have Minister, uh, minister Cooperatives? Uh, Honorable Gome. I mean, uh, defense. After defense, we have Helen. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for allowing me to, to eulogize with Parliament and the family for the great and unfortunate demise of our Sister Justice Stella Arachi Amoko, former judge of the Supreme Court. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have lost a jurist who nobody doubts her valuable contribution to the justice system. The Red Justice. Honorable State... members, don't go. We are still paying tribute until we put a question. The Lady Justice Stella Aracha Moko has moved through the radars of human development up to when she reached ju the Justice of East African Court and finally the Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court. Right, Honorable Speaker, when a girl child moves in her education from a rural school in Lira and comes to the likes of Namagunga, it shows that one, the parents and the family were agenda sensitive to support her all through. But you can also show that the lady herself, Justice Stella, was from the beginning full of confidence that I will make it as a woman. Allow me to salute the late for being a real model for our girl children and teach his families not to let down girl children when they are in school or in a of life. Plato, in one of his writings, mentions that girls should be given equal education opportunities. And he says, I quote, that I was teaching students and I found out that some girls were more and by far better performers than even the male counterparts. You remember, right, Honorable, those days women were not counted even. When they are doing their population census, women are not counted. But this man found out that 
uh, that uh, women could even perform better during his works. So Justice Stella Aracha Moku has not disproved the great philosopher. She is in fact a proponent of this philosophy. She has not let down the NRM government, which emphasizes gender equality, and which has given opportunities to women and has created an enabling environment for women to establish their potentials. Congratulations to the late Justice Stella Arach Amoko for a life well lived. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Helen, Grace. Yeah, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to stand to pay, to support the motion on paying tribute and pass my condolences to the family and especially the retired ambassador, Amoko, who hosted us in Ethiopia and of course with the justice. Right now, speaker, I have not been in court to know the justice in court, but I've known her as a woman leader. This is a woman who is a mentor. And some of us who have been in the circles of workshops of women leadership, supporting us to become what we are. She's one of the people I pay tribute to. And I know that she's a woman who will tell you a message. She was a woman down on the ground, despite her ranks. She was a woman of integrity. She was not a woman who was corruptible. Right, Honorable Speaker, one thing in one of the meetings and workshops, Justice Stella Racha Moko said, sometimes you look at us and think we are women who are different from you but we even suffer more because people decide to leave you alone suffering. But issues of women are the same. And the higher you go, the higher you get delinked from the people. And this lady, when she talked like that, I think we were in Serena, and I said, oh my God, I think this is the situation. When we become big women, we tend to, to leave. We, people fear you because of the security around you, because of how to get to you. But Aracha Moko said we have the same problems, family issues, relationships, and ABCD bringing up children. And when I looked at lady, they said, ah, justice, does this happen? Helen, switch on. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. This lady talked and she moved us. What I want to say is we pay tribute as ladies. We go through a lot. But I think, I know I'm in the Minister of Gender. We need to promote a women forum for big ladies, those who can mentor others, because the type of work we do, right now, speaker, I'm now a minister, but I feel I'm not with the people. Because when I reach home, the gate is locked. When a visitor comes, they ask, whom do you want to see? My home has been open. So there's power but there's also a relationship. And Justice Amoko could have suffered some of these challenges. Mm. So I want to say, as leaders, as women, as we move up, let us remember that we have company, we need relationship. And for me, I want to pay tribute to thank her for mentoring me, because those are the people who brought some of us, the likes of Amoko, the likes of Winnie Bianima, and the likes of Matembe. I really pay tribute to these women. God bless you and rest in peace, my sister. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Much as we go through a lot as women, men should also not make women go through a lot. Yes. We are all equal. We are human beings like them. The person you're making to go through a lot, just assume you're, she's your daughter, she's your sister, she's your mother. We are all human beings who have feelings. Grace. Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I pay tribute to Justice Stella Araj Amoko as a lady hailing from Nebi District. 
I want you to remember that in the last in the last release from UBOS, the number of children who go from P7 to secondary school is only 12% for West Nile and 8% for Acholi. I want to believe that this lady, Justice Stella Amoko, was a special one. Because if I take the greater Nebi, which comprises Pakwach, Nebi, and Zombo, we count her among the first five ladies who went to the university. And this she did without the 1.5 points, which she herself contributed to in discussing to ensure that the girls are promoted in education. Members here have talked about her profession. I don't want to go there because it's very clear how she grew in her profession and to this level, it's a clean record. It's a record which speaks for itself. So I want to speak as a special person for her intelligence, her humility, her passion, her openness, her beauty. Many times we met in many places, people would ask, people would ask, who is that? Who was she? And I would proudly say, you know, she's a lawyer, she's an attorney, she's a judge, she's a justice, and I would add, she's from Nebi. Because she raised a flag up. As a woman of that caliber, we cannot take that for granted. She was a light and she was a path for many of us. When I joined the university later, they used to tell me, be like Stella Arash. I had not known her. But when I got to know her, then I thought, this is a person I could be like if I work hard. She was one of the first women leaders in Nebi community. She's of course the first justice from the greater Nebi. She has been there for women, for children, for girls. She is always out to help in advice and even materially. She is open-minded. She would always like to be there for you. I want to pay tribute and I want to, on behalf of Nebi community, the greater Nebi, to say that we have lost a person, but this should also open our eyes that we can work hard and be better citizens to this country. I thank you, right on. Thank you so much, Chairman West Nile. Uh, right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the people of West Nile and especially West Nile Parliamentary Caucus to send our condolences to the family of the late Honorable Lady Justice Stella Arash Amoko. I came to know about this lady when I was at the university in Makerere. Occasionally, she would show up for some functions and she always helped us, especially when I became the chair of Nebi Makerere Students Association. She was a very humble lady. She would not show that she was a big person at that and you will not notice it unless you pay close attention but from the testimonies we are getting from the people who knew her better i think the lady justice created a niche in her profession in latin we would say she had a viva voce knowledge of the law and this is a learning point to all of us 
that in your various professions, you should create a niche. Of course, you can speak about all topics, even in this parliament, but there should be some areas where they say, if you are looking for this issue, the focus is so and so. And Lady Justice Stella Raj Amoku created that niche. Unfortunately, thank you. She has gone at a time when we really needed mentorship to the girl child. In Greater Navy, it is a big challenge. During COVID, it was a very big challenge, the dropout rate, the teenage pregnancies. So we needed a lady of this caliber to continue guiding the girl child. So, but since it is the will of God, we continue to, to pray that uh, uh, God will give comfort to the family, give courage to the family so that they can overcome this. But finally, I want to categorically state that she was a very intelligent lady, very diligent, very loyal, very kind, and such a person is the person we are escorting today. I pray that her legacy can be emulated by all of us so that this country can be a better place to live in. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you so much, Chair. As leaders, how much have you contributed to the girl child? How many girls have you inspired? Avuru, Rose, or Big uh, Audria. Thank Avuru, you. Avuru, Rose, Audria. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I stand here to pay tribute to the late Lady Justice Taylor Ratch, whom back home is my maternal auntie. The lady you see lying here shared the same clan with my mother. They're a game clan from a royal clan. I knew the late Lady Justice Taylor when I was a young girl in primary, when she visited us at home. And on that day, she had come to see our only surviving auntie on the paternal side, called Auntie Julia, deep in the village. I saw a beautiful woman, a relative that I'd never met. And I later asked mom, who is this? She said, this is my cousin brother's daughter. Later on, when I joined Chibuli Secondary School, I came to learn that Lady Justice Stella Ratch was a lawyer and very close to my two late brothers who are raising me up. My brother had a shop on the Winton Road here, and that was more or less the headquarter for the Navy community people in Kampala, then chaired by Mzee Peter Ochanda. Switch on. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Among the great men from Greater Navy, I would always see one lady among them, then by then driving a sunny vehicle. And she would be so, so engaging with them. When it reached a time for filling senior six forms during the university, I was doing history, economics, and geography. And the director of studies told me, no, you have to do SWASA or education. I relented and applied for none of those. Because of Lady Justice Taylor, I applied for law as my first choice. Because I was motivated by the kind of young lady by then. Later on, she became a judge. My aunt loved 
relationship. Love, that's the relatives. Despite her position, should look for us, should invite us to our home. And I want to agree with whoever said here that she lived a balanced life of an African woman. I remember one time home, how she would serve her husband so diligently, actually on her knees. I could not believe it. I want to implore us leaders here, especially the women leaders, that despite our positions, let us copy the positive aspects of Africanism. Lady Justice Taylor Ratch, you see here, was very generous. The crowd that I saw in her home, leave her alone her biological children, you'd not believe it. Every time we went home, the numbers were 10 and above. In her living with all these people around her. She was an organizer. When her dad died, that is the first time I saw a woman who remained firm, leaving the legacy of her father, helping the siblings, supporting them in education. That is the lady we are saying bye-bye today here. I want to implore us here that when God puts you in a position that you can help and support others, let us do so. Because that's why we can all stand here and say all that we are saying about Lady Justice Taylor Arach. Lady Justice Taylor Arach, you are our icon in the greater Navy. I am made to, to know that actually she was the first graduate, female graduate from the clan. And all of us that strive to reach where we are, we all look to her. I want to conclude by thanking His Excellency the President for identifying Lady Justice Taylor and raising her to the position that she has she she she, she served, lastly served. We cannot take that for granted. We want to thank him and we pray that more of our people, more of our lawyers be identified. And at least that will wipe our tears as a people of the region and be raised to that level where Lady Justice Taylor was. Auntie, rest in peace. Thank you so much, Avoro. It's a sound funny that you, you're not admitted for law. You missed out. And uh, man, I saw you clapping. Much as you want to be given that care, stop going around with the house girls. Have respect for the women. Rose. Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, on behalf of the West Nile community, I want to thank you in such, on such a day, on behalf of parliament, I want to acknowledge the contribution you have given for the send off of our dear beloved sister. We'll not take this for granted. Thank you so much. We owe you. Thank you. Right honorable speaker, I first came in touch with my dear big sister when I was doing diploma in law before, go, before enrolling for LLB. That was the Naroa High Court. And uh, as a, a paralegal, of course, after seeing a judge, you'll all want to crowd and move away from her. And she said, no, come to me. And she held my hand. I went with her to the office. She asked me why I decided to go for diploma, no degree. I told her I lost my dad in senior two. And I had siblings that I had to look after. And then she said, no, it's possible. You have to come from far. And I, I want to say, 
you should be the first lawyer in your village. For me, it has been a region. I took, I didn't take it for granted. I went home. I thought over this. I prayed to God. The rest is history. Today, I'm a lawyer because of her guidance. I'm one proud girl who got her name. Thank you. Who will text her and she will write back? Will dearly miss you. You are so exemplary. You guided many of us. I pay tribute to you. I pay special tribute to you, my sister. We love you. May the good Lord rest your soul in peace. Thank you. And to all those who are now claiming they love Stella when she's gone, the body is going to sleep here. Let's sleep around with Stella. I want to see that love tonight. Audrea. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, right Honourable Speaker. All, all the logistics are provided for by the Speaker's office. All I need is you here. Everything is provided for. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, as members of parliament from the West Nile region, we want to say thank you for the support and love you've shown to our sister. Right Honourable Speaker, the great lady lying here before us, I have known the family for more than 30 years. One of my elder brother happens to be her neighbor in Mboyachi Nautaka, where her house is. To know how honest and sincere this lady is, go to her house in Mboyachi Nautaka. With all the positions she has gone to, she has never moved away from that village. She has been the only one for us as the eye of West Nile region. When I saw my colleague, my senior colleague, Mwangusho, trying to bring up a point about her contribution in the ruling of the election petition by NUP, even if your position, her contribution, you will appreciate from somebody who is just. Go back to our contribution in the electoral copy, election copy of 216 of Amama Mabazi against His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda. Her contribution is very clear. Without wasting time, right on the speaker, we have for the 44 years our sister has served this government, from 1989 up to date, she has experience of 10 years in the Supreme Court. That means she served again for 20, I mean, 30, 34 years in the legal fraternity. Now, Lady Justice. They say God gives and takes. We believe as West Nile, God has taken you so early. Our prayer is that even if you're in heaven, send your spirit. Send your spirit to the judiciary, especially the human resource department. We have people like you from West Nile who have worked in this judiciary. They have the same integrity like you, but they have been applying as judges. When you come to the shortlist, they are nowhere. Send your spirit to them. That, Send that, your spirit to them. Audrey, that's Judicial Service Commission. Let the spirit go to Judicial Service Commission. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. With all those few 
words, I pray that our spirit rests in internal peace. Thank you. The spirit should go to the Judicial Service Commission, not to judiciary. <laughs> Lango parliamentary group, then I will come to, to Ligo. Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. On, the, on behalf of the people of Lango subregion, and on my own behalf, I would like to convey my high condolences to the family of the late Lady Justice Stella Araj Amoko. Right Honorable Speaker, as women have realized that we are doing very well in judiciary, just like you are doing very well to lead this parliament. Right, Honorable Speaker, imagine in the United States of America, the Supreme Court has only 5% of women compared to the number of men in judiciary. Right, Honorable Speaker, when you look at the United Kingdom, where we were under them from 1990, I mean, from uh, 1900, no, under British protectorate. 18, <laughs> sorry, 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 I missed that. Just, just when we were under British protectorate, right, Honorable Speaker, from that time up to this time that uh, Uganda is independent, we have 55% of lady justices in the Supreme Court. But when you look at United Kingdom right now, right, Honorable Speaker, 80% of, of men are dominating the Supreme Court, leaving only two lady justices. Imagine. Switch on. <laughs> so this gives us something that Uganda as a country under the leadership of His Excellency, the President, Yuweri Kaguta Museveni, we have risen to the ranks because right now, as you compute, we have 55% of women who are lady justices out of the nine uh, justices of the Supreme Court, right, Honorable Speaker. Now, we shall continue rising in these positions, right, Honorable Speaker. And we remember Lady Justice for her hard work in the judiciary and living by example. Right Honorable Speaker, this person lying here was appointed to that position for her hard work, for her humility, for being a woman who is exemplary. And I know that when we bury her, her replacement will also be a woman who is very hardworking and we want that one done. To the appointing authority, yes, right honorable, I have to say this. In Uganda, we have affirmative action for women in almost all the departments, but there are other departments that are not observing the affirmative action that has been given as a great chance to the women of this country. So right honorable speaker, as we remember our sister, our great and great justice of the Supreme Court, I just make an appeal to our honorable colleagues who are here that we pray for this family, we pray for this nation. I thank you, right honorable speaker, for thank giving you for giving me this opportunity. May the soul of the Lady Justice, Stella Arachamoko, rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you so much. Women have risen in this country and they will continue rising. 
prime minister here is a woman, everybody is a woman. Uh, <laughs> Chair Ligo, then Agnes. I am coming. Members, don't worry, I'm coming. We are about to. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I joined the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs on 15th January 1990 and was sitting in the Eastern Wing there. And I found uh, Justice Honorable Mary Stella Aracha Moko as one of the staff members there. She had joined in 1979. She uh, used to sit on fourth floor with um, Justice Betty Musoke, Justice Cheborion Barishaki, Deus Biamdisha, uh, Dennis Bireje, OMJ Ndaula, the SG and the AG amongst others. And she was a member of FIDA Uganda, which we were all members of. And I remember that we were taking um, mentoring from people like um, Justice Chikonyogo, the late, Justice Paji Bahigaine, the late, Justice Solomon uh, Bosa, Sarah Bagalaliwo, Jennifer Mguma, and others. And uh, she was um, a strong member of FIDA. She uh, was in the Civil Affairs Department as a senior state attorney from 1990 to 93, then became Commissioner of Civil Litigation, 1995 to 1997. And we were already um, told about how she became a judge of the High Court, East African Court of Justice, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court. She was also chairperson LDC Management Committee, President Nawuj, National Association of Women Judges, chairperson Judicial Training Institute, Chairperson Judiciary Monitoring Committee, member Judicial Service Commission. She was soft spoken, she was pleasant, and a, she was a happy person. She dressed well. She had a good sense of humor. She mentored young lawyers and insisted on proper presentation in court. Uh, new lawyers get caught fright sometimes, but she guided them. She never allowed you um, to feel intimidated. And she was also a homemaker. She always told us uh, to respect our spouses uh, when we got married and uh, to be down to earth. I would like to thank God that I got to know her and that she was a friend. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Amoko, for being um, her uh, confidant and for the fact that she was able to express uh, the qualities that one would see in uh, Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, uh, before you. I also want to thank God that she did observe um, uh, Article 126 of the Constitution, which talks about the exercise of judicial power, because it's supposed to be done in conformity, in conformity with law and with values, uh, the values, norms, and aspirations of the people. And they talk about justice being done to all irrespective of their social economic status, justice not being delayed, adequate compensation being awarded to victims of wrongs, reconciliation between parties being promoted, you were talking of arbitration, and substantive justice being administered without undue regard to technicalities. Rest in peace, Justice Stella Arach Amoko. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chair Ligo. Thank you very much, the Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I rise on behalf of the people of Nebi District and on my own behalf to pay my tribute to our fallen sister. As leaders, there's not much that I'm going to add. We have had the qualities of our fallen justice Sister Stella Arach Amoko. As leaders, from here up to where we are, all the leaders who have been called by God, it is my prayer that we follow the footprint of our fallen justice Arash. As the people of Greater Nebi, as Alur, we are all heartbroken. It is my prayer that the family members they remain strong. It is the journey that all of us are going to reach to. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Vice Lego. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I join the colleagues 
in supporting the motion. Pay tribute to Honorable Lady Justice Amok Stella. Amok. I'm not from West Nile. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have known just Stella in the four aspects. One, as a neighbor in Mbuya. Two, as a chairperson of management committee at LODC. At that time, I was a lecturer. Three, as a, a member of the Judicial Service Commission, she severely appeared before our committee of legal and parliamentary affairs. And then lastly, and very important colleagues, in 2011, I represented one of us here in the court of appeal, both in the High Court and Court of Appeal. And that is the Honorable Namuyangu Jennifer here against Kamba Sale. And we had a very serious issue. We filed her petition on the last day. And then when we went back, went to the bank to deposit court fees, there was no network. And we paid court fees the following day. And there was an issue as to whether our petition was competent or not. We argued that issue before just Chibita then, when he was in high court. He agreed with us. He agreed with us that our petition was properly before court. The colleagues were dissatisfied and we went to court of appeal. There was a panel of three judges, including her. The two judges kept on asking me whether I had read the decisions of Amama Mbabazi and the one of Ali Ndawula. And those decisions were on all of us with the facts before the Court of Appeal. And the two gentlemen, the two judges, could not give justice, could not give me opportunity to address court. They said, but why do you lawyers waste time on some of these issues? This is something that is very obvious. The two decisions settle this matter. I asked them to give me time to address court. Just a right there, quoted the Article 28 and said, why don't we allow him to be heard on this particular issue? Colleagues, I, 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 I quoted the decision of 2001 of the Supreme Court. And that decision, I told the judges that if the courts in Amama Mbawazi and the Ndawula Ali were alive to that decision, they would not have decided the way they did. And directly or indirectly, the principle changed that court fees can be paid at any time and that cannot render a petition a nullity. So if it wasn't for her patience, if it wasn't for her tolerance, if it wasn't for her listening, would not be having that position, would be still struggling just like we are struggling in some other principles. So that is the lady that made us to clearly make that decision. I mean, they made a decision and that is now a clear principle that even when you file your matter today, court fees, and you don't pay court fees. I've just been paying school fees, Madam Speaker. And so, so I conclude by saying that uh, colleagues, we are not just talking for the sake of it, but uh, she has contributed to our. She has she has contributed as far as uh, legal issues are concerned in this country, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. But as I conclude, allow me say may her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Alum. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. On the behalf of the people for Yam District and on my own behalf, I stand here to pay tribute to the late uh, Lady Justice Stella Araj Amoko. Right Honorable Speaker, 
if there is any institution which has benefited from the lady justice lying before us is the institution of parliament. I remember in the last parliament, when we had just joined parliament, then we were called by our party and requested to vacate our seat in parliament because the elections were shammed. We had a very heated meeting as members of UPC in parliament in the ninth, in the ninth parliament. Then Article 84 of the Constitution of Uganda, which talks about the recall of members of parliament were read before us. And we refused to vacate our seats in parliament because we didn't know how to go back and tell the electorates why we were vacating our seats in parliament. The only hope, right honorable speaker, lied in the case which was before court as far as the rebel MPs were concerned. So that was our hope. And when the judgment was passed and the rebel MPs won, it was not only them, but it was us as members of UPC, which our party also wanted us to leave. So right honorable speaker, I want to thank the lady lying before us for that wonderful independence and decision that she made that even as UPC members of parliament, in the ninth parliament, we were also a beneficiary and I want to thank her so much. Secondly, right honorable speaker, as a woman, I want to stand here very proud of a fellow woman who really worked with all the humility and really raised the status and the standards of women who have been given offices and more especially in the judiciary. There is no history of corruption that you can find in her legacy as a judge of the Supreme Court. Right, Honorable Speaker. I want to believe that as women in this country, we have a lot to emulate as women who are also in the judiciary. There is a lot to learn from the late Justice Stella Araj Amoko. I want to pray that may the almighty Lord, may the good Lord rest our soul in eternal Please. Thank you. Thank you. There's a parliamentary. Uh, after there's a parliamentary. I want to sincerely thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to pay tribute to the Lady Justice. The career Honorable scheme... members, wait and we put a question. Even me, I want to leave this chair. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, it's such a very painful thing which happened on 17th that is we woke up to the sad news of the demise of the Lady Justice. I'm one of the beneficiaries of her kindness in court. And I want to thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for putting the record straight before all my colleagues here that members of the legal fraternity are level headed people. Yes, they are all level-headed. We want to appreciate you for putting the record straight here today. Yes. Right Honorable Speaker, Justice Rara Chamoko, even if she is lying lifeless here, judges can die. But Right Honorable Speaker, a good judge does not die. She lives on with the decision that she has made. True. So I don't believe that she has died. She has left jurisprudence with our country that lives on beyond our time on earth, which will be referred to. It's very unfortunate that in a very short period, this is the second judge of the Supreme Court that were paying tribute in this house. When you look at all what she has done and what has been put in the motion and what has been talked about, you look at a loss to a country. Even it at her retirement should be very fruitful. She has experience in all corners. I tried to look at all the doors and windows. You realize that she has passed in all of them. And you ask yourself, this is an accomplished being. Right, Honorable Speaker, judicial officers, the judges of this country, are among the greatest contributors of peace. 
through the decisions that are made in court, it helps to settle disputes and they contribute to the peace. She has been one of the greatest contributors of peace because she would give you a well-reasoned decision that surely you would not hate your opponent because of the decision. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Baiga. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. I stand to second the motion, but I also stand here to mourn the death of Justice Stella. In all professions, right honorable speaker, there are certain icons we look to for mentorship so that you can know in those steps I go, I'll be a successful person. For us in the medical professions, we had people we looked up to who would guide us and mentor us. And I sympathize with you people in the legal profession that at this time, when the legal profession needs a lot, such icons go. And the, I sympathize with you because you must mourn, him, mourn her. I have never been before her, but I have been reading judgments that she has made. And her and the late justice, Chibuka Musoke, are some of the icons that I have been following in election petitions because I have been in those subjects for quite a time. Right Honorable Speaker, we who have been seeking for justice, some of these are the most important people that we have been looking to. And we don't want to despise uh, those in the legal profession, but take it, there is a lot to do in your profession. When you lose such people, it is this time that we can speak to you and you reflect to what you do so that you test your integrity, whether it can match those that we are mourning today. We mourn the death of Justice Stella because we have lost a person of integrity. Before her, you would see integrity and you, she would dispense justice. Even if you lose, you know you have lost in good hands. Just like you can lose a life before a good surgeon. You know, this surgeon was not gambling. Has tried his best, but I think God had to do his will. That is the way we think, you people in the legal profession, with a privileged profession such as yours, would emulate such icons, if at all our country would benefit from you. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Milton Savacristo, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, on behalf of my people of Chiguru South and my family, I want to pay tribute to our fallen hero lying before us here. Right Honourable Speaker, if the fallen hero had not done a lot of mentorship, we would be lamenting a lot. But I have to salute her, commend her for mentoring so many people. Right Honourable Speaker, since the Eighth Parliament, we been interacting with her in the justice law and the other sector review meetings, where she was always invited to lecture and the council give guidance to most of the legal fraternity to those practicing that discipline. And many, many of them have kept referring to her as a reference file. Right on speaker, a case in the point is the Lady Justice Abinio Susa and the one you introduced here. Lady Justice Bamugemere. If you look at their judgments, I think they have grasped very well the principles of their mentor. I want to thank God for her life. I want to thank everyone who, have, who has supported her during her tenure of service. May her soul rest in eternal peace. So at least somebody is thanking you when you're still alive. Thank you, Sue. 
Um, Sorry, we call each other Sue and Anita, so yeah. don't worry. She's a. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, on behalf of the people of Karungu East, including one of my constituents, Honorable He's Speaker. He's a Sabbath priest of the Catholic Church, so, and the person lying there is a Catholic. Yeah. And on behalf of the Catholic community in the Parliament and the entire Uganda, uh, we would like to convey our sincere condolences to the family and to the judiciary uh, in particular, and the entire country for the loss of our uh, beloved Lady Justice, uh, Stella Arachi Amoko, uh, in the, the fallen hero we have here, we have a parent. We know very well as the church, what builds our church is family. A family person with a husband and children. So lying here is a, a mother to some people, a wife to somebody who has been very exemplary because as parents, the best thing we can do is bring up our children very well, who can be of, uh, who can be assets to this nation, other than liabilities or problems to the country. All of us. This should teach us that being in a good position or a high, a position of. Uh, Professor. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I join Honorable colleagues to moon and honor Honorable Lady Justice Tera Arach Amako. Amoko. I register my condolences and also the condolences from the people of Shema. I was a member of the Constituent Assembly that scrutinized debated, enacted, and promulgated the 1995 Constitution. At that time, we envisaged a country with an independent judiciary where the courts of judicature are expected to dispense justice to all. I'm glad, right Honorable Speaker, that the late Honorable Lady Justice did not disappoint us. Previous speakers have made this point, but the question that lingers in my mind is that what gift can we give to maintain her legacy? In my view, if we appropriate more resources for the judiciary, she would rest in eternal peace. Because when I look around, especially in the lower are, courts- Are you, am are you amending the, the prayers? Is it an amendment? Yes. Uh, let me first make this and then uh, I make a prayer. Uh, right when I was speaker, when you look at the lower courts, like the magistrate courts, you see congestion, you see stress, even of the magistrates who are handling the cases, you see delayed justice, yet we can do better. if we appropriated more resources. Of course, I'm aware of the scarcity of resources and- Honorable, what I'm saying, if you want to make an amendment to the prayers of the motion, just move that you're making an amendment to include prayer A, B, C, D to urge government. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I beg to move the motion and amend the motion for us that government increases resources for the judiciary so that they can do better. I beg to move. Is that seconded? Seconded by Moma, Dennis, uh, Legal, Doctor, Accord, Rose, Akech. 
in Bilia. Members will make an, an amendment to the motion that we it has not been done. We need to increase on the funding of judiciary. Me and Prime Minister, we know this very well, that we are not funding outside what they have. We just want to increase the funding on judiciary. And the Chief Justice has been lobbying this over and over. Yes. So to conclude, as I speak to my motion, if I talk- uh -huh, You're not speaking, it's not a okay. motion. Okay, let me conclude. Let me conclude. Let me speak as a researcher. If we take security as an independent variable and judiciary and judicial activities as an, inter, as a, a, an intermediary variable, then you'll have socioeconomic transformation as a dependent variable. So it is very important to increase the resources of judiciary if we are to achieve our agenda of socioeconomic transformation. Thank you. Thank May you so much. Rest in internal peace. Thank you so much. Luero. Then Sarot. Thank you, right honorable speaker. I rise to second the motion and also pay tribute to the fallen lady justice. Right Honorable Speaker, when I joined parliament in 2011, uh, for the next eight years, I had election petition. And uh, I used to be in court almost every month. And I preferred the lady justice to be on my panel, especially in the court of appeal. So but you're part of the people choosing the No, I didn't choose, you know, the procedure, but I preferred as a person. And there was no chance but I really liked her. The precedents borrowed and used in my petition were very powerful. And uh, being a woman, I, I admired her. And I thought one day she will be a deputy chief justice or the chief justice of this country because all her work spoke of quality, decorum, justice, and like Honorable Lulume said, even if I lost before her, I would still go out of court convinced that I didn't have that case. Mm -hmm. I really want to appreciate her in his abs her absence and also uh, thank the family for sharing her with us. Because I know, like they said, her spirit will live on in all the jurisprudence. And may her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you Thank so you. much. Indeed, her spirit will live on. Sorotti. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I joined the House to pay homage to the Lady Justice Stella for a life well lived. Right Honorable Speaker, when I share with my colleagues, uh, lawyers, there was not a single complaint about the Lady Justice from the bar, no lawyer ever complained or raised any issue regarding her. And it was the prayer of every litigant to appear on a panel, before a panel where the Lady Justice was because of the confidence that they had in her and the level of professionality she exhibited. So as she lies before us, uh, it's my sincere hope that the family will find peace in these times. And uh, I send you, I bring you condolences from the Forum for Democratic Change Party. We all wish for a judiciary and judges and justices like of the caliber of Stella and uh, of her level of ambition and professionality. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you. Minister of Constitutional Affairs. Madam Speaker, the motion moved by the Right Honorable Prime Minister 
and ably seconded by the leader of opposition represented by the opposition chief whip, paying tribute to the late Honorable Justice Taylor Raj Amoko, deserves the unanimous support of this house. So without reservation whatsoever, I join in supporting this motion. I had ample time this morning to eulogize Justice Taylor Raj Amoko while representing the government during the requiem mass at Our Lady of Africa Church in Mbuya. I'll share some few reflections on the way Justice Stella Rach Amoko personified the best attributes of a great judge. The great constitutional lawyer who many lawyers are familiar with, Dicey, said that parliament represents the people who are sovereign, therefore this house is the representative of the sovereign. The executive administers the law and the judiciary adjudicates upon disputes regarding the meaning and application of the law. In the training of judges, there are characteristics that are outlined befitting a member of the bench. A judge should be studious, courteous, conscientious, patient, punctual, just, impartial, fearless of public plays, praise and clamor, indifferent to private, political or partisan influences, he or she should administer justice according to law and deal with his or her office as a public trust. Madam Speaker, listening to the tributes being paid today, and I hope the family is paying attention, you would see that Justice Taylor Raj Amoko exemplified all these attributes of a judge. She had courage. Many of the decisions she made required courage because they were made in the heat of a lot of pressure. It is important that today we insist that the judiciary is not a political institution. Parliament and the executive are political institutions because they make policy, but the judiciary we cannot accept the judiciary, which is a political institution. That would destroy the very meaning of what a judiciary is. Any country is based on a set of values. These values are given life by institutions and the institutions are driven by people. So an institution cannot be better than the, the people in those institutions. Therefore, your call for a merit-driven judiciary is very important. I have heard some of the complaints that have been stated here. These can be discussed. For instance, how Judicial officers are recruited. Judicial officers are not recruited by the judicial officers, by those who preside over the courts. Because when the constitution was being made, there were changes. The chief justice used to chair the Judicial Service Commission, but that has now been changed. We will examine whether it is better or not. The Judicial Service Commission, because of limited resources, has only one full-time person, the chairperson. The rest are not there full-time, and yet they are the ones who are supposed to discipline the judicial officers. So as we talk about abuses of power, including corruption, 
and even incompetence in the judiciary, we have a body known as the Judicial Service Commission, which should be the watchdog. So we need more resources for the Judicial Service Commission. As for those who apply and don't get appointed, I have some news for you because we were only told there were 11 vacancies. So if you have hundreds of applicants for 11 positions, I think the proportion would then be that many people would miss the opportunity. Just like uh, this house has about 500 plus members, but if you look at those who get nominated, they are in thousands. So going by the law of proportion, I'm not surprised, but there are principles for recruitment and balance of region and religion and all those other things that make us Uganda are taken into account. But it, you can only balance those who have the qualifications. You just can't go to the streets to say we are looking for somebody from this community. I don't think you would want a doctor just on account of regional balance. You would want the best. Madam Speaker, on May 5th, 15th, Cabinet approved the Judicature Amendment Bill 2023, whose objective is to increase the number of justices of the Supreme Court from 11 to 21. So there will be many more vacancies. And we shall also increase the number of justices of the Court of Appeal from 15 to 56, including the Chief Deputy Chief Justice. Parliament also approved the motion for a resolution of Parliament, which I will be bringing here under Section 13 of the Judicature Act, to increase the number of judges of the High Court from 83 to 151, including the principal judge. Therefore, going by the principles of averages, I would like to assure Honorable Audria that chances are that those who are complaining will now have higher chances. I, I do not think we should impute improper motives on the Judicial Service Commission. Members, finally, you said that you should have gone to Justice Stella Rach Amoko's hospital bedside to thank her. But Parliament also deserves praise from the judiciary. And since the judges cannot come to this chamber, let me represent them by thanking you, members of Parliament, for enacting the administration of the Judiciary Act, which gives the judiciary a lot of room. Of course, there are things that we need to rethink. For instance, here, the speaker chairs the, 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 the commission, which, uh, but in the judiciary, it is not the head of the judiciary. Those are some of the things that we need to balance. Imagine if the chairperson of the parliamentary commission was from outside parliament. I think you, you would have a little bit of a problem. So in my new position as Minister of Justice, I ask questions to get feedback from people quietly to see whether there are things that can be improved. I want to thank you in the same breath for increasing the budget of the judiciary. And in the same breath, I thank the president of Uganda for the massive support he has given and continues to give to, to the judiciary of, of Uganda. So I have been authorized to bring these amendments to the Judicature Act and to bring the motion so that we increase access to justice to our people. It is our promise, honorable members, that in less than five years, there will be a magistrate in every constituency so that uh, we have real access to justice. In the spirit of uh, the late Justice Stella Aracha Moko, we are also mainstreaming alternative dispute resolution to decongest the courts. We are probably reading old news about the backlogs, but I can assure you that for the first time in a, a few years, 
we have more people who are actual convicts in the prisons than those on remand. There was a time when we had more people on remand than convicts, which meant that there was a kind of, of, of traffic jam. We are also coming up with a policy which we intend to take to cabinet next week to adopt a policy on alternative dispute resolution so that the monies which are tied up in the courts can be released. We have thousands of acres of land that cannot be utilized because there are caveats and injunctions on them. UNRWA has deposited billions of shillings in the courts because of disputes about road reserves these monies are not in the economy. So at a time when our country needs really to have all the money in the economy, we cannot afford a court which has traffic jam. Finally, we, in terms of independence of the judiciary, I believe the judiciary pushes back uh, really to claim its space. You, you saw how the Chief Justice and the Prime Minister had some exchanges at a certain point. Yeah, because uh, we must protect boundaries, just like uh, each institution must protect its boundary. So the judiciary has to do that. You also heard how the judiciary pushed back when the president wanted to amend the constitution on matters of bail. Fortunately, because of the new spirit of... Uh, talking to each other, which we really need in this country, the president abandoned that plan, but achieved his objective by having a, a judiciary issue practice directions, which I think enabled him to be satisfied that the interests of victims are being taken into account. We are also coming with new proposals on how to improve the education of members of the legal profession so that we don't have a fast food approach, which is sort of like KFC, just uh, rolling members of the profession into the market. We, we must ensure that regulation. And um, Justice Stella Rachamoko was unequivocal in denouncing executive overreach. An example is these RDCs and district security committees who want to first sit and determine whether an order of a court should be enforced. And uh, one day, Justice Taylor Rach Amoko actually summoned an RDC and his entire security committee to court. Because once the court has pronounced itself, the only thing is to appeal. You cannot sit as an RDC surrounded by security operatives, and then you demand to read the judgment because that's what was happening. So we, as parliament, it is your duty to firmly protect the judiciary from executive overreach. The rumors of corruption are exaggerated, I can tell you. Many times, those who pretend to be speaking for the judges actually have not spoken to the judges. They are commission agents. They are peddling fake influence. I can tell you, and the lawyers who want to eat your money, claiming that judges need money. I'll give you a live example. In one case, a, a, a somebody, actually a, an office orderly, a clerk went and read a draft judgment and knew where the case was going, who would win. He then went and told the other party that was going to win that, you know, his lordship needs something. You better do something, then you will win. So money was arranged and given to that clerk and he pocketed it. But the judge, as, as judges normally do, they are always eager to find new authorities. So the judge found an authority which made him change his judgment. So he went to court and this party put on his best suit waiting to receive victory. And then he lost. So he told his lawyer, we gave this judge money. How could he read such a judgment? We were assured. Lawyers have access to judges. judges. So the lawyer went to meet the judge and told the judge, my Lord, we understand you received money and my client is complaining that there was no consideration. Uh, as illegal as it was, I once read a book called Honor Among Thieves. So even those who are thieves can have honor. So they talked about uh, their corrupt dealing. 
And then the judge said he had not received any money and neither had he demanded any money. So they named the clerk who was involved and the clerk was promptly dealt with. So we shouldn't be the ones to exaggerate these cases. Let us be very, very specific. The Judicial Service Commission is there to deal with the bad eggs. I heard about this proverb of that, if one cow has diarrhea, then people may think the entire kraal has diarrhea. I don't think the entire kraal has diarrhea. There are a few cases of diarrhea, and we have got flagyl to, to, to sort it out. May the soul of our departed Lady Justice Stella Rachamoko rest in eternal peace. Thank you so much, Your Honorable Minister. And as we go and do more recruitment for the judges, the names that you forward to the president should be having a national character because you are the one who sends them. National character. I, I don't want that aspect of saying if they don't qualify. They disqualify them from the beginning, even when they qualify. As appointments committee, we shall be waiting. We want national character, religion, okay? Gender. This business of saying we have 55, we don't have. Let's start like we have, we are starting at zero. Gender must be there, women, we need the women. Honorable members, I now put a question that Parliament pays a glowing tribute in honor of the late Lady Justice Stella Raj Amoko, Supreme Court Judge, pursuant to Section 23, Schedule 3 of Administration of Judiciary Act, with amendment from Professor Mushemesa, those in favor send the control and A. The eyes have it. Thank you so much, honorable members. And for those kind words to the late Stella. And Stella still lives. Stella has left a legacy behind. Stella has children. And the legacy remains. Anthems in reverse order. May we please rise.
Please remain standing as the casket exits the chamber. You may resume your seats. Honorable members, the body is going to lie in state to stay overnight here and to leave in the morning. And uh, humble request. Let's stay with the body if we can. Let's stay with the family. Today it is Stella. Tomorrow it is any of us. We therefore adjourn the house to tomorrow, Thursday. Thank you. Yeah, go with your car. Wait a bit. Just this. I think you took 